Imagine you wish to use objects having a certain interface without knowing their concrete implementation. How would you create them without exposing that knowledge? Hmm? Let's learn how to solve that problem. First, let's create some code which exhibits the situation. Let's say we have an interface called widget, as usual, public, some usual fluff, and a virtual method which will do stuff. Cool. That's our interface. Now let's create a class which will actually use our widgets. Let's call this class gadget. Now let's make it final. We don't want any subclasses. And again, usual fluff. Okay. Here we have do stuff on widgets. Cool. And for now, let's return zero. And here, let's make a gadget and output g do stuff on widgets in the line. Okay, cool. Nothing complicated. So let's see what we can do on our widgets. For example, we would like to create a couple of them, a few of them. We want to do stuff on them, sum it up and return it. Seems pretty simple. But where do we get our widgets from? The gadget only knows their interface. It doesn't know what the actual widgets are and how they work. This is a typical example of decoupling the interface from the implementation and working solely on interfaces. This is actually very good. You can create various widget implementations without affecting the gadget at all. But we still have the problem of giving the gadget some widgets to work on, right? That's where the abstract factory pattern comes in. First, let's create a widget factory. A widget factory will be an interface and it will create some widget for us. How will it do it? Via a member function. First, let's uh, make a simple alias for what we actually want to return. Depending on your situation, you will pretty much want to return different stuff, but usually you want to return an owning pointer, which, as we all know, is a unique pointer. So let's say our widget pointer is cd unique u unique pointer, if I ever manage to write it properly, widget in our method which will create those widgets we return it and will be called ah, create widget it will be const why would it be const well because our interface doesn't imply that any internal state changes when a widget gets constructed and const means that no visible state changes so now we have our widget factory and let's give our gadget the factory so it can work on some widgets. First, it needs to remember that factory. So we make a field factory, which would be a const reference. And therefore, we need to pass this reference to the widget factory in our constructor. Factory, oh, a typo. As usual with my code, typos all the way, all the time. Ah, factory, factory. Cool. Okay, we have our factory. So now we can actually create some widgets. Let's say we want to create three widgets and accumulate the results of them doing some stuff. So first, let's say we have auto result equals zero. In four, I equals zero, less than three, plus i, 
What do we want to do here? Well, first, let's create a widget using a factory. Ah, widget. What's going on here? Ah, create widget. Cool. So now we have our widget here, and let's accumulate doing some stuff on it. Widget, do stuff. And then we return the result. Nice. So you can already see that something is going on here. We don't know what the widget actually is. We only know its interface. We are using some abstract factory to do it. Abstract because we also only know the interface of the factory. We don't know the actual implementation. But all that enables us to actually do some work. Now let's create some concrete implementations and see how it works. First, let's create a concrete widget. Let's call it, well, concrete widget. Concrete. Did I spell it right? Ah, oh, I think I did. Public widget. Public. Normally, you should also create your copy, move, constructors, operators, etc., etc., but I'm omitting it here for the sake of keeping this video shorter. And now let's override our do stuff method. Do stuff. Override. So, what do we want to do? Ah, let's return a random number. Device rd uniform in distribution because we want ints and let's return distribution with rd. Cool. So we are returning some random numbers and our gadget simply accumulates the results. Okay, we have concrete widget. So what do we need more? A concrete widget factory, of course. Let's make one. Class on create widget factory, and here we override the creation or construction method, and we return a unique pointer make unique having a concrete widget. Cool. Now we can freely give our gadget any concrete implementation of a widget via the factory. This gives us great power. The code can use different widgets without affecting gadgets at all and without exposing any information, especially dependencies of given widgets. The only thing left here is to actually pass the factory to our gadget. Factory, factory, nice. Okay, let's see what happens. Does it build? Of course it builds. And the output is something random, exactly what we expected. Now, having all this, let's think about what the actual benefits or gains from using these patterns are. Let's show how to leverage all of this in practice. A classic example would be a test. Instead of concrete production widgets, let's create our test widget and see if our gadget works with our test data. So let's make a test widget. And our do stuff method will actually return something deterministic. For example, zero. Now let's create our test widget factory. And our test widget factory, as you can guess, will return our test widgets. Now let's substitute our concrete widget factory with our test factory. And note that nothing in gadget changed, but we can now test its internal implementation if it works correctly. So let's give some test output. Say it should be zero. And what do we get? Zero test passed. Now let's say there is a bug in our gadget. For example, it starts from 1, not from 0. 
And again, using our test widget factory with our test widgets, we can easily test the internal implementation of gadget. Should be zero, but it's one. We have an error. In production, of course, we don't want to use test widget, but we want to use concrete widgets. So we instead pass our concrete widget factory. These were very simple examples, but with large code bases, with lots of layers and dependencies, factories become a necessity to keep everything as decoupled and testable as possible. I hope you found all of this informative. I hope you learned something. I hope you will start using factories whenever possible to decouple interfaces from implementations and to make all your code testable. Click subscribe, share your thoughts down below in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.